Hello friends, it is awesome to have you with me today. My name is Larry Hutton. This is the Larry Hutton Ministry Broadcast and we're glad to have you with us. We're going to have a great time. We always spend time in the Word each week. We, we really talk about things that make our life better. You know, when Jesus said He came to give us life and that life abundantly, He really wants us healthy, wealthy, wise, full of love, full of peace, full of joy, full of gentleness, kindness, goodness, enjoying, I mean, being happy in life. And uh, that's really what we're all about. I found out years ago that God's a good God. The Bible says only good and perfect come down from the Father of lights, and He doesn't vary from that or hint or even have a shadow of turning from that. So we're going to just get back into the Word today and study some things. I want to just get real because I, I, like, I like being able to take things Jesus taught and the Word of God teaches and apply them to my life and see results. You know, see things work. Life get better. And, uh, you know, you, you, you hear the word relevant. Yeah, relevant is let me have something that's going to help me in my day-to-day -day walk and uh, be happy in life and be healthy in life, be financially free in life. All the things that Jesus came for us to have, praise God. So let's just turn in our Bibles, if you will, because I was thinking as I was praying today before I came over to the television studio, and, you know, whether you're watching this on TV by our Roku broadcast or Facebook or YouTube or however, man, uh, send us emails, send us uh, messages, let us know how much you enjoy it. And, and we love hearing from you. So, um, but I was just thinking, I was thinking, you know, there's so much more that God's wanting to do. I was kind of meditating on when Jesus sent the 12 disciples out. And it says he gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out and over all manner of sickness. And he said, go and heal the sick and cleanse the leper and raise the dead and cast out devils. Freely you've received and freely given. Freely you've been given and, and you've received, so just freely give. But then not long after that, he sent 70 believers out, 70 followers of Jesus. They weren't the 12 apostles. They were 70 others just like you and me, 70 people that are following Jesus. And he sent them out and he said the same thing to them. And they went out and man, what they returned, the Bible says they returned with joy because they, they told Jesus, man, even the devils are subject to us through your name. So they had things happening, miracles happening regularly, people being healed regularly and many, not just few. And I'm just thinking, you know, here we are, the body of Christ today. Here we are, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ today. He's the head, we're the body. We ought to be having more things happen today than we've had in the past. And uh, I'm, I'm just not satisfied, man. I, I'm ready to go on. So we're just going to talk about that today anyway, at least this one program. We'll see if we want to pick it up in the next program or not. But I think just to spur us on, let's, let's believe God. You know, what, what are we believing God for? What, what, um, what can our God do in our life? You know, how big is our God? Do we really believe He's big? You know, I was driving down the road. You may have heard me tell this story one before. And I was driving down the road with a pastor one time, and he asked me, how big is God? And I said, oh, God's big. We went down the road a little bit further, and he asked me the same question a second time. He said, how big is God? And I said, He's big. <laughs> A few minutes later, the third time, he asked me the same question. How big is God? And of course, this time I said, he is big. And I almost shouted it, you know, and he shouted back at me. He said, no, he's not. He's bigger. <laughs> That's true. He's bigger, bigger than any problem we face, bigger, bigger than any dead end we've come up against, bigger than any mountain we're facing, bigger than any situation that is caught, that, that's trying to overcome us in life. God is bigger. So I question, how big is our God? How big is your God? How much are you willing to step out on a limb for Him and believe Him to do the mighty and the miraculous things? So we're going to talk about that, and I'm just going to go to some scriptures that I believe will inspire us. I believe when we look at some things about Jesus and about our God, I think it'll just help us to say, okay, you know what, I, I'm, I'm limiting God. You know, the Bible says that the children of Israel limited the Holy One of Israel. They limited Him, and yet He still did mighty things there. 
And he's still doing mighty things in our midst today. I mean, there's a lot of miracles happening. We, we were, wasn't long ago we were in Singapore and we were talking to a, a man of God that goes in. He's actually Chinese. He goes into China a lot. And he was talking about the miracles that they're having happen. And he said, Larry, he said, just like in the book of Acts and in the Bible where you see things being multiplied, he said, we see those things happen in China regularly now. I mean, people praying over big bowls of food and, and they empty it about halfway down or three quarters of down and all of a sudden it just fills back up right before their eyes. These things are actually happening. These aren't just, uh, you know, uh, stories and, and, you know, good little wives tales. No, these things are actually happening around the world. Miracles are happening around the world. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not belittling what is happening. I'm just saying we need to be seeing it a whole lot more. I mean, just Jesus said, go do the works that I do and greater works. He, listen, he went and opened the blind eyes. He cleansed the leper. That would be tantamount to us walking up to a person with terminal cancer and say, okay, we're going to get rid of that right now. And it disappears from their body. They don't have to go any more chemo, no more radiation. No, no, they just, they got healed and it was instantaneous. Why shouldn't we be seeing those kind of things? Well, I don't believe God's changed today. I believe the Bible said God is the same. We know the Bible said Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever, which means he's the same today as when he walked the earth. So I want to challenge all of us. I'm challenging myself. I'm challenging you. Let's step out and start believing God for bigger things because God is a big God. L look at Isaiah. Let's go to, this is where I was starting when I was studying today. Isaiah chapter 9. And look at verse number 6. This is a, a passage that a lot of times we'll read during the holidays at Christmas season or before Christmas. But um, let's look at this in, in, in the, the light of what we're talking about here. Isaiah chapter 9, we'll, we'll read verses 6 and 7, but I want to start with verse 6. And this says, of course, it's talking about Jesus' birth. When Isaiah talked about that, it says, Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. I kind of like that because we know Jesus was born, but, but then it goes on and said a son is given. You know what that means? God gave you. God gave me Jesus. Wow, what a gift, huh? <laughs> you talk about a gift. I mean, that's a gift that keeps on giving, right? We're not just talking Christmas time now. Now we're talking every day, which, you know, those of us that really believe in Jesus, we know that Christmas is every day of our lives. Thank God our government and our country and certain places around the world allow us to, to celebrate a certain day and have that season each year. That's fun and wonderful, but I celebrate Jesus every day of the year. So Christmas is every day of the year for me. Christ Mass, Christmas, amen, Jesus, all about Jesus. So, uh, so it says, unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. The rule, you might even say a government rules, right? So you might even say the rule is going to be on his, in other words, he's carrying the world on his shoulders, amen. And then it says, and his name shall be called, and then it gives us different names. And, and let's just talk about those for a minute. It said he'll, his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. Boy, we could preach a lot of days on each one of those, couldn't we? And then it says, verse seven, of the increase of his government, or his rule, the increase of his rule. See, one thing you'll have to learn about Jesus, and maybe a lot of you already have, and that's this, he never forces his rule on anybody. It's always, hey, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. For my yoke is easy, my burden's light. So, I mean, Jesus wants to be the ruler of everyone's life, but he doesn't force himself. He's not like Satan, the devil, the evil one, the destroyer, the wicked one, the deceiver, the liar. He goes by a lot of different names, but Satan wants to force uh, sickness and disease. He wants to force poverty. He wants to force fear. He wants to force death upon us, but not Jesus. Jesus, uh, he's uh, the Prince of Peace. Hallelujah. And so of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth, even forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. You know, we're going to see more and more happen as we get closer and closer to the return of Jesus. Things are going to escalate. Things are going to build up. And they're going to escalate and build up in the realm of darkness, the kingdom of darkness, more and more. 
things will wax worse and worse, but the realm of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, the realm of light, that's going to continue to get brighter and brighter. You know, the, Bi the Bible says the path of the just grows clearer and brighter. Well, how can things grow clearer and brighter in the midst of things waxing worse and worse? It's because you and I are going to let our light so shine before men when things wax worse and worse. Like the psalmist said, a thousand may fall at my side, 10,000 at my right hand, but it will not come nigh me. So that sounds like pretty bad stuff happening. If you have a thousand people fall on one side, your left side, and then 10,000 at your right side, that sounds like some bad stuff going on. And yet, it shall not come nigh me. Why? He gives his angels charge over me to protect me in all my ways, to guard me. He says, uh, call on me when you're in trouble and I'll satisfy you. And, and with long life, I'll satisfy you and show you my salvation. I like that long life. You know what he did not say there? Uh, he did not say, and with long existence. This will help any of you that maybe are going into your older age years. I realize, no, wait a minute, with long life, he's going to satisfy me, not long existence. In other words, I'm not going to live long and just exist, just, just be there. I'm just breathing. You know, I can't, I'm not strong. I'm not healthy. I'm, I'm weak. I'm weak mentally. I'm frail. No, that's not the life God has for us. God said with long life, you look up that word, we're talking about the life of God. So just like Moses at 120 years old, we can still be strong physically and healthy physically. Our eyes not dim and not, not, none of our natural forces weakened and lessened, but still strong. Moses did more from 80 to 120 than he did his first, first 80 years. And he was under an old covenant, not as good as ours. And he did not have God living on the inside of him. So how much more can we under a better covenant living on be, in better promises? Wow, I'm preaching me happy, and I haven't just got started here. Glory to God. So, unto us, Jesus is born, and Jesus is given. Boy, we have a God that loves us. For God so loved the world that he gave Jesus. Isn't that cool? God loves you. God loves me. You say, but brother, all hell's breaking loose. If God loves me, he's not loving me very good. No, that's not the truth at all. The truth is God loves the whole world, but if the world doesn't receive him, see, it, it takes simple childlike faith to believe. Let me give you an example. One, one time when I was a little kid, hadn't learned to swim yet, we just moved from Tampa, Florida out to Odessa, Florida. My dad built a dock and I was on the dock, stand on the dock, and my daddy looked up uh, from in the water. He was in the water, about five foot of water. I'm, what, three, three foot tall or something on the dock. And he says, Larry, jump. And you know what Larry did? I mean, it was amazing. You know what I did? I, I know you're going to be totally amazed at this. You know what I did? I jumped. <laughs> I, without thinking. I didn't think. I mean, I guess I could have stopped and thought, now, now what if I jump and daddy's lying? and I'll drown. <laughs> or what if I jump and, and daddy somehow loses grip and I slip through and I go blah, 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 and I drowned? Or what if I jump and daddy jumps back and says, just kidding, and I drowned? Uh, I didn't think of any of those things. In fact, I didn't think anything other than a reaction on daddy's words. I mean, I'm, I was probably thinking daddy said jump, so jump unconsciously. But since daddy said jump and I'll catch it, I didn't even think. I just jumped. And guess what daddy did? Caught me. That's exactly what God wants to do in our lives. He says, get out of the boat and walk on the water. What did Peter do? All right, Lord, I see you doing that, so I'm going to do it too. And yet people would persecute you. <gasps> Wait a minute, how dare you say you can do what Jesus did? Oh yeah, we can do what Jesus did. Jesus said so. He said, the works that I do shall you do also and greater works than these in John's gospel. He doesn't, Jesus can't lie. Jesus wants us to. Hallelujah. So look at this. We're talking about Jesus. Is he the same yesterday, today, and forever? If you haven't read Hebrews 13, 8, you need to go read it and come back. Maybe put me on pause or something, you know, come back and, and then wait a minute. You know what? The Bible does say he's the same. So here it says he's, his name is wonderful. He's a counselor. He's a mighty God, not a weak God. 
Not, not a second-rate God. He's a mighty God. He's an everlasting Father. So I don't care if our natural fathers let us down and mess up in our lives. He's everlasting, which means He's also going to be with me for eternity. So when this capsule of time here on the earth, whether it's 120 years or 150 years that you live, all of a sudden you're with the Father for eternity. And then... Prince of Peace. And of course, if you've ever been around my ministry for any amount of years, that's, that's a big message of mine. God wants us emotionally stable and free. Oh yeah, He does. He is the Prince of Peace. And of course, that word peace is shalom. It goes way beyond just the emotions, but it definitely includes the emotions. And most Christians don't know that, that their emotions, their feelings have been redeemed. He's the Prince of Peace. But I wanted to zero in on one particular word today. His name shall be called Wonderful. Wonderful. I looked up this word wonderful and I saw something. I thought, hmm, this is interesting. This word wonderful, if you look up the Hebrew word, it actually translates in the Hebrew miracle. His name shall be called Miracle. Hmm. I don't know about you, but I like that because... Whoever calls on the name of the Lord. Isn't that what Romans 10, 13 says? Whoever calls on the name of the Lord. Hmm. So I can call on whatever his name is. If his name is provider, if his name is healer, if his name is miracle, if his name is peace, if his name, whatever his name is, I can call on that name and receive the grace that goes with that name. Wow. Wonderful. His name shall be called Miracle. So I thought, okay, if his name was Miracle back then, and he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, then his name is Miracle today. Which means then we can still... See, I was taught in church growing up, well, healing and miracles have been done away with. That all ceased when the last apostle died. But if that were true, then Jesus didn't tell the truth. <laughs> If miracles ceased and healing ceased, then Jesus must have lied. The Word of God must have lied. God must have lied. God said, He doesn't change. I'm the Lord God, I change not. He said, Jesus is the same today as when He walked the earth. No, the Word of God doesn't lie. God doesn't lie. Jesus doesn't lie. If His name was miracle then, if His name was provider then, if His name was healer, whatever name He, he went by back then, then it's still the same today. His name was miracle back then. That means it's miracle today. And you know what that tells me? Listen, friend, that tells me miracles are still for us today. I remember when I heard healing and miracles been done away with, and then I got in a church that told me, wait a minute, no, God still heals today. You know what happened to my body? I got healed of an incurable disease, <laughs> believing that Jesus was a healer. But, but, but I had that disease for over 20 years because I heard that healing had been done away with. Well, once I got healed, I thought, oh, all right, I was told healing and miracles have been done away with. But now I got healed in my body. Jesus, I found out, still alive and he's still a healer today. So guess what? That means miracles still must be for today. So the cripple can be made whole. The cripple be made whole. I remember one time I was in a meeting with a great, great man of God. And um, I saw this quadriplegic. Actually, he had been shot in the spine with a, with a gun. The bullet had lodged in, the, in his spine, and he was a quadriplegic. He had been that way for 15 years. And I remember watching that man after the man of God that prayed for him that night laid hands on him. I remember watching that guy walking later on. He got out of the chair and walked. He, he hadn't taken a step in 15 years. I saw him, his leg, all of his muscles, because of not walking or being able to move from the neck down for 15 years, all of his muscles had atrophied. I saw this and thousands of people saw it. And my wife has a testimony to it. And, and the pastor friend of mine, he'll, he'll still testify today about it. But I saw this happen. This quadriplegia got up and walked. And then I got the opportunity when I went back in the hotel. We were at a convention center. The hotel was con connected to the convention center. And this guy walked in the elevator, came in the elevator with me and said, Larry, he knew who I was because I led praise and worship at these meetings. And he said, Larry, look, and he pulled up his pants leg and he showed me muscle forming on his bones already. And when I saw that, I thought, oh my goodness, this is absolutely impossible in the natural realm. This is a miracle. First of all, 
He was a quadriplegic, hadn't walked in 15 years. Nobody did any surgery on him as far as I could see, except for God, of course. But I'm talking about, man, nobody did any surgery. This, the bullet was still in the spine that caused the paralysis. And here's a man walking. And Liz actually got to see him years later. Years later, we were back in that state preaching in the area, not at that particular church. But the pastor came up to Liz and said, oh, by the way, he's the best worker in my church. He's completely and com uh, made whole. And he never did go have that bullet taken out of his spine. So it may still be there. I don't know. But who knows? God may have taken it out. Let me ask you this. Is God still a creator today? Has God still got all power today? Can God still do miracles today? If God doesn't change, he can. And I say, yes, yes, yes. So, yes, he could have taken the bullet out of the spine. But I just use that example. You know, I remember Liz and I were up in Vancouver, British Columbia. And I was preaching along, and I got done ministering. And all of a sudden, I heard a word come to me from the Lord, uh, often referred to in the Scripture as the word of knowledge. And uh, all of a sudden, I knew that there was somebody present that had a heart problem and that God wanted to make their heart whole. I didn't know. Now, I, sometimes I've actually had God tell me what the problem is and how long they've had it and all that. I, di I didn't know. I just, I just knew by the Spirit of God in me that, okay, there's somebody here. I was getting ready to turn the service back over to the pastor, you know, because I was done ministering. All of a sudden, I just heard this word, somebody has a heart problem. I want to heal them. Well, so I called that out. I said, okay, if there's somebody here with a heart problem, well, guess who it happened to be? The pastor's wife. And she was born with a deformed heart, a valve missing, and, and it was crazy stuff, you know? Well, here all of a sudden, God's wanting to show off. <laughs> and we have a good God. He loves to show off. And so, uh, and if we believe him, see, that, that's the real key. We've got to believe. And I'm going to show you that in the scriptures as we get along. Probably get into this more next week as well. But anyway. His name shall be called Wonderful, Miracle, remember? So I, I had her come up. We laid hands on her. Now, we did not know that she was born with a deformed heart. We didn't know this until afterwards. Actually, it was several weeks later the pastor called us and let us know this. They had, he had just built his wife their dream home. I'm talking a beautiful, I don't know how many thousands of square feet, a beautiful, large, beautiful, people would call a mansion, you know. And um, he had made, built this home for her, and she had never and been, been in it for like, I don't know, almost a year or something, never walked up the stairs, couldn't. To see the upstairs, she would have to be carried up. She could not walk up because of her heart and the condition. Uh, it would cause her to pass out. So anyway, after we laid hands on her and prayed for her, and we didn't know the condition. We just knew she had a heart problem because God told me, but she didn't tell me anything. We laid hands on her, Liz and I both. And then we, we just knew that we knew that we knew whatever it was wrong with your heart, it's healed now. Well, she went back home after the meeting was over that night. I think that was the very last night of our meetings. Liz and I flew out the next day and um, we got a call some, uh, not very long later. I remember how many days later we got a call from the pastor letting us know the whole situation. She was born this way, deformed. She got home that night, he said, and she's been running up and down the stairs. Ooh, glory to God. Sounds like she has no heart problem anymore. You know, and through the years, we've seen this over and over and over and again. But, you know, like I said at the beginning of the program, I'm not satisfied. I want to see more of these things happen. So we're going we're gonna to talk about these things more. I'll pick this up next program because I see we've run out of time. And I want to let you guys know because we always let our viewers know that we have some uh, resources available for your life enrichment, to enrich your life, your life in betterment. You, you want to have a better life. You want to live a better life. Man, I'm telling you, you want to be happy and stuff. So that's why we always make these resources available. And I, I don't think I've mentioned uh, our Bible study course. I may have mentioned one of them, but not, not both of our Bible. We have two different Bible study courses that would really help you. One of them is on financial freedom. So if you're struggling Maybe you're not financially free. You're living paycheck to paycheck. You're way under, you're just way under the load. You're, you got lots of debt, man. You're, you just don't know what to do. We have a financial freedom uh, Bible study program called God's Way Financial Freedom. And uh, this one, this one comes in CD only, I believe. 
yeah, my, my TV manager is saying yes. So this one comes in just CD, so you can order. And if you order, in fact, I brought the, the uh, list up here. If you order this God's Way uh, Financial Freedom Bible Study course, what you get is you get six CDs. So, so it's six lessons, so six weeks long, whether you're doing it at a Bible study with a bunch of people or by yourself, it's six weeks and it, you get six CDs, you get a leader's guide, and you get one workbook. Now, if you're doing an actual Bible study where you have other people joining you, then you can order additional workbooks. But the first thing you'll get if you order the package is the, D, uh, the CDs, six CDs, the leader's guide, and then the workbook. And the workbook has the fill in the bank, blank and answer and all that stuff. It's just a great way to go to the next level financially. If you want to just get out of where you're at, maybe, maybe you're already financially free, but you just feel stuck. You think, you know what? God wants me walking in more. I need to have more to get the kingdom of God out. I need to distribute more, put more into the kingdom. Well, God's way, financial freedom. And then we have the uh, living in peace. This is a whole series, and they'll have the information there on the screen for you. The living in peace, and the same thing. Now, it comes in DVD or CD. So if you have like a church, you're a pastor and you'd like to, maybe your midweek services, we have some pastors doing this, your midweek services for six weeks show this how to live in peace for six weeks in a row. You get the leader's guide, you get the workbooks, and, and man, you can teach. It's so wonderful because you can take people out of the realm of their emotions controlling them, their feelings controlling them, their hormones controlling them, and get to the place where God's peace and God's joy is controlling them. I'm telling you, it's, it's real, folks. And so these Bible study courses are there. Uh, and, you know, depending whether you order DVD or CD, he'll have the prices up there on the screen for you. But all of these are just great resources to enhance your life, to help your life, to better your life, to strengthen you, to help you walk in the abundance that God has for you. And we want to say thank you. Those of you that are partners with our ministry, I love just taking a moment to say thank you. You're helping us get this word of God out all over the world. You're helping us reach people. You're helping us send stuff into prisons and different places where they can't pay for things. Thank you for helping. And I said, if you're not a partner and you'd love to join with us, man, we'd love to have you because it's not a one-way street with us. Partnerships, man, we're joining forces with you too. We're going to help you. We're going to pray for you. We're going to strengthen you. We're going to feed you. I'm telling you, this is, a, this is a labors together deal, praise God. All right, well, we're out of time, so we'll pick this up next week. And uh, just remember, God loves you, and you are an overcomer in Him. Amen. God bless. Join us again for Limitless Life with Dr. Larry Hutton, where you'll get practical teaching from God's Word that you can apply to your everyday life. Go to LarryHutton.org to watch this program and many others. You'll find special offers and resources to help you thrive in life. You can check on Larry and Liz's schedule and join them at a meeting near you. That's LarryHutton.org, or you can call 888-887-WORD.